Two of the best words in sports. Season opener, Western Kentucky hosts Vanderbilt in historic Diddle Arena to start the year. Hello and welcome, I'm Brian Klein. Very happy to be with you with John Butler. And John, this is what it's all about. A full diddle and a lot of excitement up to the gills. Yeah, if you love <laughs> basketball, this is one of the best times of the year right here. Both teams 0-0, zero zero. both teams excited to play. And why do we love basketball? It's because of the star power, and both of these teams have it. Let's start in the backcourt for Vanderbilt. Kaija Harbison, definitely a player to look out for. Transfer from St. Louis, and the Bellicans all-time second leading scorer. And what she did at St. Louis, hard to replicate. Yeah, I mean, she comes from a very good, very good university, four-year starter, 17 points a game, three or four assists, a lot of experience. And then a lot of experience, even though not much age, for Lexi Mead, the sophomore, started every game of her freshman season. Great floor general, 10 points a game, four, four assists, outstanding point guard. And she was sixth best in freshman passing in WKU program history. Meanwhile, we know who's going to be the key players in this game, but how about the keys to the game? Because we'll start with Vanderbilt. I know their defense is something to look out for. Yeah, they're very defensive oriented. They were sixth in the country last year in steals. Uh, they really put a lot of emphasis on their defense. That's Greg Collins, the head coach for WKU. We mentioned the emphasis on Vanderbilt's defense. But what about for Western Kentucky? But they want a fast tempo. They want to play fast, make a lot of threes. There's Shea Ralph, second season with Vanderbilt. UConn legend has a couple of natties as a player, as a coach, and Vanderbilt hoping to turn their program around under the tutelage of Shea Ralph. Yeah, she was an outstanding player at UConn. Won a national championship and won six as an assistant for Gino. We're just about set to go. Western Kentucky and Vanderbilt in the season opener. This is what it's all about. Vanderbilt ending their postseason drought last season. First time since 2014. We are underway and pushing the tempo early on. Brown loses her footing. Now the Commodores, their starting lineup is an interesting look as they travel on a scrum right by the free throw line. That's Yambrian Chambers. And yeah, not only did she travel, she lost a shoe. I can't have that. Vanderbilt in a 2-2-1 full court press. Western Kentucky trying to beat this press, and the Hilltoppers, rather Lady Toppers, know a thing or two about beating the pressure. They like to press as well. Nifty move inside, That's and the scoring is underway in 2022. It's Aaliyah Pitts. Yeah, that was an outstanding reverse layup that time by Pitts. Stutter step for Harbison. And now Gerard trying to feed Washington inside and a bump. Yeah, that's not much of a foul. That could be a, that's a big, big early foul right there on, on Jalen Foster. Uh, she is uh, very, very instrumental. Western Kentucky does not have a lot of size. They cannot afford to lose her. Looks like, Western, looks like Western is in a matchup 2-3 zone right now. Aija Harbison transfer from St. Louis, kind of a bridge backcourt with her and Gerard. Shot clock is down to six, and it's battled away. Jalen Foster on the steal, ahead, tiptoe, kick out, and it's Acacia Hayes. Baseline drive, she's denied. Sasha Washington got a cuticle on it. Here come the Commodores. Abracadabra in transition, it's Kaija Harbison. Very good, very good in the break that time. That was a nice left-hand layup for that time by Harbison. And it looks like Vanderbilt is, is also in a 2-3 matchup. No, that's, that's actually man-to-man. -man. They went through on their cuts. Acacia Hayes, one of the best point guards in the 2022 class. Now over to Lexi Mead, shot clock down to five. She needs to make a move. She slices inside, kick out for Hayes, shot is denied. Another block for Vanderbilt, and that's a shot clock violation. Yeah, yeah that time, that time Acacia Hayes didn't have a lot of choices that time. She got it at the very end of the shot clock and uh, got her shot blocked. So one thing that you need to understand is Greg Collins looks on trying to figure out this Vanderbilt defense. One thing you have to understand about the Commodores, they are elite in the steals department, sixth in America last season. They did lose Jordan Cambridge, the nation's leading stealer from last season with a torn ACL, so that's something to look out for, rather a torn Achilles tendon. 
Back and forth early. Here's Jada Brown off the mark. A good box out by the Lady Toppers. Macy Blevins led the team in threes last season, trying to work on her inside game. Oh, nice inside pass, another step, and a deuce. Deja vu, it's Jalen Foster. That's a great assist that time by Macy. Macy's known, known for a three-point shooter. That's a nice dunk down to Foster. It looks like so far it's not going to be easy to score. Both teams very aggressive with their hands, very aggressive defensively. Here's Jada Brown. Freshman slices inside. Out of control, off balance. Redirected by the interior defense and bat of the way. Western Kentucky will take over. Yeah, Western Kentucky giving up some size on the inside. That was a good block out that time by the freshman, Acacia Hayes. Vanderbilt making a swap. Jada Brown is out. Vanderbilt and Bella is. Lachance is in. Yeah, and they're staying in their 2-2-1 two -two pressure as well. Early lead for the Lady Tops. Acacia Hayes sharing with Pitts, the UVA transfer. Now Foster shakes her defender. Mid-range jumper won't go. Revived by Blevins back up. No. And it's out of bounds. Western Kentucky will hold on. And still, that's great hustle by Macy Blevins. Last year, primarily at just a three-point shooting threat. Already more aggressive this year with the assists and the offensive rebound. Acacia Hayes dribbles inside, it's kicked away. Bella Lachance can't get it. And back to WKU. Got caught that time on a double dribble that time. Didn't really see that. So Western Kentucky making a mistake, shooting themselves in the feet, and Bella Lachance is quarterbacking the offense. Nice defense from Macy Blevins. Chambers inside, double team to Washington. Loose ball to WKU. It's another good play that time by Foster. It's her second steal. Blevins has range. Hits played 26 games in two seasons for the Cavaliers. Now trying to shake Washington and a foul. Sasha Washington called for the personal. Yeah, yeah. Sasha Washington is the, is the leading, actually, scorer that's returning that's actually eligible to play. You can see right here, she put two hands, that's an automatic call, two hands on the dribbler that time. Averaged 7.6 point, points a game last year, and they're leading rebounding, rebounder that returns. Definitely keep a close eye on Washington's fouls because her rebounding is something that Greg Collins emphasized as a key to this game. Another self-imposed error for WKU, another turnover. Not uncommon. First game of the year, really. Both, both teams excited to play. You're probably going to see a little jitters early in the game. That's Western Kentucky's fourth turnover. Ryan Allen, reigning Miss Basketball in Pennsylvania. Double team to Washington. We've seen that time and time again early on. Shot clock down to 10. Harbison slices inside, stops, pops, and finishes. Yeah, that's her game right there. She's got a great pull-up game. Good first step, nice little pull-up jump shot by Harbison. So let's see Western Kentucky's response here. Acacia Hayes on the baseline, walking the tightrope. A kick out. Here's a three ball on the way. It rims out for Jalen Foster. A nice offensive rebound for Pitts to keep the possession alive. Here's Lexi Mead, tees it up. Too strong. It's two good looks that time by Western Kentucky. This is season opener basketball if I've ever seen it, but a turbo and a layup. It's Kaija Harbison. You can see why she averaged 17 points a game last year for St. Louis and was a four-year starter. She's very, very good off the dribble. She started every game that she played. Another turnover for WKU. That's already their fifth. And it was a shuffle feet situation to travel for Jalen Foster. Timeout on the floor. Oh, Western Kentucky and Vanderbilt going at it. There's Kaja Harbison doing a little thing or two in transition. But WKU's got an offensive response as well. We're back in about a minute. Well, early on in this season opener, Western Kentucky four and Kaja Harbison six. 
Yeah, I mean, she's uh, she's for real. I mean, she's got all six of, six of the, the points right, right now for Vanderbilt. Two on drives, one on a pull-up. Uh, you can tell how experienced she is. Right here is the, the first points right there off the drive. Both, both of her drives are finished with left-hand uh, finishes, and this is her pull-up game. Saw her play in high school at Louisville Mail. She was a special player then, and uh, she's had a really good start. Uh, that's what she was brought here to do. Kaija Harbison, the transfer from St. Louis, from Louisville, Kentucky. A bit of a homecoming for her, and showing up early with all of the Commodore's points. I think nerves have played a little bit in the, in the first five minutes. Seven turnovers between the two teams. Entry fee denied. Sasha Washington had no path. Back to WKU, Macy Blevins wide open. Left it short, back to Vanderbilt. Marnell Gerard, nifty move, high off the glass. Too much English, and Ryan Allen was bumped. Lexi Mead called for the foul. Yeah, I, th I think the referee that time was probably going to let, let that play through on Lexi Mead until the player lost control of the ball and fell down. So that's, that was his correct call. Well, here's she, another look at it. It's funny because Mead is the shortest player on the floor, but Allen went flying. Yeah, that was the, that was the right call. Uh, but as soon as she lost her balance, you had to make that call. And fighting on the entry feed. And again, an interception. Western Kentucky's defense is alive and well. Acacia Hayes fresh off the bench. Levins trying to make a move on Allen. Draws the double and another turnover. Kaija Harbison spinning and winning high off the glass. Yeah, that was a very good body control that time by Harbison. She went right into Hayes' body and then finished that time with the right hand. Acacia Hayes looking for a response. Tornadoes inside, lost possession. Another turnover for WKU. Lachance, Euro step, big time rejection. Aliyah Pitts is there. Can they turn it over? No. They turn it into points. Jalen Foster converts. Yeah, you gotta give that, you gotta give that credit to Pitts that time. She got the block and then the assist that time to, to Jalen Foster. You like fast pace. This is what you got right here. Amari Williams stutter step inside, and the reigning four-star is going to the strike. Yeah, she's the she's probably the biggest player that you're on the floor tonight. She's uh, six foot four out of Little Rock, Arkansas, four-star recruit, and uh, that's uh, Vanderbilt's biggest lineup right now. There's six four, six three, as you see. She's got really good position that time, and she's gonna be hard to handle when she gets the ball that deep. Amari Williams. 93rd best recruit in the 2022 class, according to ESPN. They have, uh, Vanderbilt has two girls from Arkansas on the team. Williams and Brown. She splits a pair, and she is out in place of Yambrian Chambers, the senior forward, got the start today. Jalen Foster out right now. She's had a really good start to the half. Foster just swapped out in place of Gabby McBride. Full court press taken away by Demi Washington. Keisha Hayes is really, really struggling right now. She's, a, you tell, a little bit nervous, her first career game. Sasha Washington finds Gerard back for the two-man game on the baseline to Washington. Extra feed. Harbison, one more to Washington. Shot clock down to five. Knifing inside, layup is true. Yambrian Chambers fresh off the bench. Yeah, she doesn't score a lot, only averaged two points a game last year, but that was a nice finish. Western Kentucky beats this full court press, and a foul. Marnell Gerard, the transfer from Boston College, a little too close for comfort on Aaliyah Pitts. Yeah, right now, uh, the turnovers for Western Kentucky is uh, really, really hurt them. And of course, that's what Vanderbilt did last year. I mean, six in the country, very defensive oriented. I think some of the turnovers are nerves. I think some of the turnovers is Vanderbilt. We saw Jada Brown getting ready to check in. Bullet pass inside, denied. Yambrian Chambers in the passing lane. Vanderbilt, sixth best stealing team in the nation last season. 
but a turnover. They cough up the opportunity. Gerard is the culprit. Yeah, I don't think Gerard agreed with that one. But, so a travel uh, on Gerard takes her out of the game. Jada Brown back in, and Hope Savori checks in in place of Teresa Faustino for WKU. Yeah, Hope now, Savori has an interesting role this year. Sorry to cut you off, John. No, I was going to say, she's the most experienced guard on the team. Another turnover that time by the Lady Toppers against the press. And I don't think the home t home crowd's real crazy about that block call on Hope Savari, but but uh, the biggest problem right now for, for Western Kentucky are the turnovers. I mean, they're closing in on double digits in the first quarter, and right here is the play, and I think it's the right call that time. Uh, Savari, Savari was just left on an island. Yep. Not quite set. That's the correct call. Demi Washington, entry fit inside, and gobbled up. It's Gabby McBride there. That's good post defense. So far tonight, uh, the uh, Western Kentucky's post defense has been really good between Foster and uh, that time Gabby McBride. Back to Vanderbilt. Harbison face guarded by the freshman Josie Gilvin. Says she loves defense. It's her favorite part of the game. Yeah, out of Sacred Heart, out of Louisville. Jada Brown rims out on the mid-range jumper. Demi Washington is there. Menace on the glass. Yeah, not a lot of offensive rebounds for Vanderbilt, but that, that one led directly to a basket. Faustino, wide open three. Won't go. And Vanderbilt picks up possession again. Yeah, so far, the Lady Towers, those are the threes they're going to have to eventually make if they're going to beat Vanderbilt tonight. Those are good shots for them. Washington. No dice. Nice rebound. Another feed and a cutter. Washington. That's great, great hustle that time by Chambers on the offensive rebound in the assist. And Vanderbilt has broken open into a 15-6 lead. The Commodores, fresh out of the SEC. Points were hard to come by last season. They ranked last in the conference in scoring at just about 63 points per game. Meanwhile, Western Kentucky scrambling for answers on both ends of the floor, John. Yeah, right now, as, as I mentioned, it's turnovers. Turnovers are, are a big problem. Right now, uh, Western Kentucky is close to 10, and then the last few positions, they've given up these offensive rebounds. Right there, great hustle that time by Chambers, and there's the assist. So, you know, when you're turning the ball over and then you're giving up offensive rebounds, that's one of the reasons why it's 15 to 6 right now. Now WKU facing a very, very true test to start the season. No weaning into this one. No, and, and Vanderbilt it, looking the part. And it's not something that Western Kentucky is, is immune to. I mean, they've opened the last five years with Louisville, Notre Dame, Iowa, uh, and then uh, last year was Purdue. So they're used to this competition. Nine turnovers for the Lady Tops, none here. Josie Gilvin in the layup lines and ending the 7-0 run. Yeah, that's how you break the press. At that time, they threw over the 2-2-1, and Gilvin did a good job. Her first career basket uh, layup against Vanderbilt. Jada Brown around the Chambers screen. Chambers gets it back. Touch pass. Back to Brown. Long two on the way. It won't go off the fingertips of Washington, taken in by the shortest player on the floor. Lexi Mead was fouled on the baseline. Yeah, and I th that was a nice block out that time uh, by Lexi Mead. 5-5, five, five, like I said, she's not scared of anything. Got right in there, and that's the correct call. And, and Josie Gilvin now. Yeah, she took, a, she took a hit that time on a screen. Looks like to me got hit right in her ribs, and uh, she's a tough kid. Top left corner of your screen. You could see her in the tunnel. Looked like she was favoring her core area. Meanwhile, Vanderbilt turning more defense into even more offense. Sasha Washington there for the layup, and a timeout called for Western Kentucky. Yeah, they switched presses that time. They went to a diamond press that time, and uh, that caused that turnover. And uh, I know Coach Collins is knowing person. I know he doesn't want to call a timeout with 37 seconds left in the quarter, but uh, he has to do something right now to stop these turnovers. Well, you get the ball back, and if you can draw up a play to get at least one more score in, then you're down by three possessions probably. Yeah. You can Ideally, you'd like to get two shots right here, two possessions. Uh, you know, it's 37.3. I don't know if Vanderbilt is going to let you hold it for the whole of the 30 seconds, especially when they're pressing. Probably just want a good shot, 
big thing is you want a shot. You know, so one thing about it, when you turn the ball over, you're not getting any shots. And this is the diamond press. They got somebody on the ball. They'll probably trap the first passer, and they just did. Jada Brown could not hacky sack it back in. Where you don't want to throw it against the diamond it press is you really don't want to throw it to the deep corner, especially to small guards. Jalen Foster subs in in place of Teresa Faustino, trying to just get this ball across the midline. And that's where you want to throw it, throw it to Foster that time. And a bailout foul. Sasha Washington is the culprit, and Western Kentucky will get over the midline. Yeah, and that's going to be two free throws for Hope Savari. And the reason why that's a better play that time is, is, is Foster, even though she's not a guard, she's also six foot, and she can see over traps and so forth. So Hope Savori at the strike. About a 65% free throw shooter uh, last year. Knocked that one down. The thing about Hope Savari, she's another player out of Louisville. There's three players tonight from Louisville, uh, and that is Gilvin from Sacred Heart, Hope Savari from Louisville Mercy. They're big rivals. And then you got Harbison from Mail. Jada Brown trapped in the corner, nowhere to go, and a timeout called by Shea Ralph. That's a bailout to you. Yeah, and that's that's another thing. You, you don't you don't really see three timeouts in the first quarter and two in the last 40 seconds very often in the first quarter. But both turnovers, I mean, both all those timeouts have been forced by good defensive pressure and traps by, by Western Kentucky and obviously Vanderbilt. All right, so now the Commodores have to be very happy with the way this first quarter has gone, especially on the defensive end. But 17 points for a team that ranked last in SEC scoring last season, well, that's nothing to scoff at either. No, and, and holding a prolific three-point shooting team in Western Kentucky in nine is exactly how they want to play. They've been, Vanderbilt's been very good on the offensive board, and Harbison has uh, really, really played well for them. Jada Brown will inbound. Freshman guard from Bentonville, Arkansas, about two hours east of Tulsa. And they will go for the last shot. Western Kentucky's going to play a little matchup zone. Vanderbilt would like to probably take a shot with about five seconds left on the, on the shot clock. That gives you an opportunity to give an offensive rebound if you miss. Game clock to shot clock differential of two. Harbison pulls up and rims it in. Western Kentucky has five seconds if they hurry. It's Jalen Foster with some space to the corner. It's out of bounds. Question is, did it go out of bounds before the clock expired? I don't believe it did. Well, that is how the first quarter comes to an end. 19 to nine, Vanderbilt smothering Western Kentucky with the offensive rebounds, with the turnovers, relentless defense for the Commodores. Can they carry it, carry it over into the second? Second, find out soon. Back here in Diddle Arena. Yeah, a lot to smile about for the fans because basketball is back season opener. Even more to smile about for Vanderbilt, up by 10 through one quarter. Yeah, Vanderbilt has really done a good job of forcing turnovers. I mean, uh, that, that's been the name of the game right there. Turnovers in general, Western Kentucky's actually forced six. But the big difference is the turnovers from Vanderbilt, they forced 10 and they scored 10 points off of it. And that's a big difference right now in the game. 19 to nine and 10 of the 19 from Vanderbilt has been scored off turnovers. And you saw that one by Harbison. Harbison's leading right now in Vanderbilt with 10 points. Well, Vanderbilt coming from the SEC and riding the coattails of Kaija Harbison, the St. Louis transfer, in her debut performance with Vanderbilt, so far so good. Macy Blevins, nice ball fake, drives inside, high off the glass, and good. Tough shot. That was, a good, that was a good shot fake from three, and then got by the defender and then finished that time uh, at the rim. Nice play that time by Macy Blevins. Blevins said her number one goal was to work on her driving game. Was, she just proved that one. It was really just a spot-up shooter last year. Here's Gerard. Nice response on the left side with the right. Another tough shot that time by Gerard. Remember, she's the Boston College transfer. Jalen Foster lost her dribble, but holds on. Fortunate pinball bounce. So far, no threes made by either team. 
And uh, don't expect Vanderbilt to be a real prolific three-point shooter. Uh, but what we do expect is Western Kentucky has to make threes in order to beat a team like Vanderbilt. Has they, to. They made 225 threes last season. That was the second best perimeter shooting performance in program history. Blevins way off there. Odie Betancourt, the USF transfer, just checked in. And, and that, she was fouled. And that was a three that time oh, off a, uh, it was a nice uh, set that they ran, freed her up. And uh, Macy Blevins is a good three-point shooter, just missed it. So Macy Blevins will pull the trigger on the inbound. That's Yabrion Chambers on the foul, her second. Western Kentucky's offense really hasn't started. Lexi Mead dribbles into trouble. The sophomore goes back to the USF transfer. And now it's Macy Blevins slicing inside, bat of the way. Vandy in transition again, pedal to the metal. Harbison, that's a charge. That is the correct call that time. Nice play that time by Hope Savari. She was sitting there waiting that time. Uh, and sitting there and drew that foul that time on Harbison. As you can see, outside of the restricted area, good call that time. Big call, you know, Harbison, that's her first. And she's a big key for the night's game, obviously. Now, Savori was calling for a bang-bang blocking foul on a similar play in the first quarter. Here's Savori on the offensive end. No dice there, offensive rebound and a putback, but it's whistled off. Jalen Foster was fouled on the floor and Jada Brown was the one who bumped her. This would have been pretty cool though. Yeah, it was a good, uh, another open three, but Jalen Foster is playing, I don't know, of, of all the Lady Toppers, I think she's played the best so far. Been very active on the boards, very active with her hands in terms of defensively. Four points, two rebounds. And Vanderbilt making a swap. Jada Brown is out, Bella Lachance in. Lachance is a Taekwondo black belt. Pocket pass inside, Foster, it's down this time, and it goes. Yeah, that was a great set that time. They've run three different options off this one set. Got a back screen that time uh, by Meade, and that time a, a finish that time by, by Foster. That was a nice, nice inbounds place. These are all extra points that you can get during the game. If you can score off your inbounds, that's a big, big benefit. Last season, a 55% free throw shooter, too strong. She gets her own rebound and a foul. It's going to be another foul on the chance, I believe. Jalen Foster has been all over the floor early on in the second quarter, and Bella Lachance called for another personal. A WKU showing a little something out of the gate here in the second. Well, the, uh, a big deal is if Western Kentucky can make free throws, that's, that's five fouls in the first a minute 30 of the second quarter. That puts Western Kentucky in the bonus the rest of the quarter. And Lachance called for her second. It should be, uh, the free throw shooter should be Foster. It looked like to me, I think they will probably go to the monitor to check this out. I thought Foster was the one that was tripped. And that's exactly what they're going to look at. Who's going to be the free throw shooter? Well, regardless of who's shooting free throws for WKU on the other side, the Hilltoppers have a lot to smile about in the second quarter. Yeah, I mean, they started off real uh, much more aggressive with Macy's shot, with Jaden Foster's shot. 21-13, still no real rhythm to the game right now, but the effort by both teams is, is, is very good. So Jalen Foster has looked like the best player for WKU, but definitely a different version of herself out of the gate in the second. What does she change from the first to the second quarter? Well, I thought Jaden and Foster was, played well the first quarter. I mean, she is the one player that, that is back this year that has experience on the inside. She can play inside and out. They cannot afford to lose her because of her size and presence on the inside. And Vanderbilt's defense was definitely a key for them in the first quarter. So far, Western Kentucky's offense seems to be moving a little bit more free. There's Big Red. Maybe the best mascot in college sports if you're a fan of, you know, Big I, Red Blobs. I don't think there's any doubt top five. Big Red's definitely top, top five? five. Definitely right. top five in the country. No question about it. I'm a Syracuse alum, so I feel like I'll be burnt at the stake if I don't shout out Otto. Uh, I don't know much about Otto. He's uh, very similar to Big Red. 
Really? He's he's orange, but he's not a fruit. Has it been on the ESPN commercial? I think he has. Okay, all right. All I right. think I think ESPN's giving some love to Otto. <laughs> yeah, why not? That's a blast from the past for me. Western Kentucky in the second quarter, coming out with a fire. Jalen Foster, the catalyst. And we're getting free throws here from someone. Question is who? I, my money is on Jalen Foster. And, 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 and that's it is exactly Jalen right. Foster. Yeah. Jalen Foster shot 56% last year. Her first free throw attempt tonight was not very good, but she's, she's a... She's got good form, good rotation. You can see she should be she should be a easily a 70% free throw shooter. Sophomore from Austin, Texas, pretty new to the game, started playing basketball in high school. That is so rare when kids now play the AAU from the time they're six years old. Uh, she just picked up basketball in high school. Probably had no bad habits, actually. Le chance pocket pass inside. No one home on Allen. She lays it in. And the foul. Yeah, a little confusion on the, inside, on the inside by the Lady Toppers that time. Nice speed and nice finish by the freshman, Allen. Well, that's a pretty quick, swift, and effective response for Vanderbilt. Rianne, Rianne Allen missed basketball in Pennsylvania. 82nd best recruit in the 2022 class per ESPN. And she finishes the three-point play. Western Kentucky has some ground to cover. Here's Acacia Hayes, the freshman, already with four turnovers in her Lady Topper debut. Yeah, got to get her going. Uh, struggled a little bit early, but she's a better player than that. I think she, once she relaxes, she'll be fine. Macy Blevins led the team in threes last season, but no one has hit a three for WKU. Shot clock down to five. It's Hope Savoy, the junior. Cross court feed, Jalen Foster, stutter step. One second on the timer. She throws it up. And it's a shot clock violation. Another turnover forced by the stifling Commodore defense. Yeah, Jalen should have taken the first three soon as she got it that time. Got to recognize the clock, the shot clock. 12 turnovers for the Lady Toppers. Vanderbilt was plus three in turnover margin last season. Kaija Harbison's been quiet in the second quarter. Ryan Allen had an old fashioned three point play. And nothing doing there. Odie Betancourt had it bat of the way. Demi Washington hounding her in the backcourt. Back to WKU. It's Macy Blevins giving the keys to Hayes. Cross court feeds Savori. Shakes her man. Thought about the three. Instead, it's Jalen Foster and a wedgie. <laughs> that is a wedge shot right there. I mean, eventually, eventually, Western Kentucky has got to make threes. There's uh, referee Troy Winders. Yeah. Uh, 20 years ago, Troy would have jumped up and got it. Now he's. Now he's <laughs> what are you trying to say? I know Troy Winders quite well. Uh, now he's got to use the broom. Well, if it makes Troy feel any better, I've always been a broom guy myself. <laughs> You're not hanging up, hanging around the rim. Not me. So now Vanderbilt takes over. Nifty move for Gerard. Harbison, extra feed, Washington. Dribble drive, it's swept away. Home Savori on the takeaway. Two on one action. Savori in the corner, and she will not get a shot off. Macy Blevins calling for the offensive foul. Yeah, that's another, another good play that time, defensive play that time by, by Vanderbilt. You, you have to jump stop. Uh, when you make that pass on the break, because if you don't jump stop, you're just going to run right, right through the defensive player. And there's a good job by Harbison. Not much of a, not much of a charge, to be honest with you. It looked like to me she was kind of falling back, but she got the benefit of the call. If that's a WNBA. There's no call there. Gerard over to Harbison. Demi Washington's been quiet. Vanderbilt chair on the rock. Now it's Jada Brown, the freshman, over to Allen. Missed basketball in Pennsylvania last season. Missed it wide. Yeah, she's clearly comfortable shooting the three. That's two straight threes that she's taken. Acacia Hayes with no room granted by Jada Brown. There's a swap over to Allen. Baseline drive and a travel 
Fifth turnover of the day for the freshman Hayes. Yeah, Vanderbilt just totally, totally taking Western Kentucky out of their offense. You see the pressure that time, just nowhere to go. Correct call that time. Well, that's something to look out for. I mean, Greg Collins is certain that Hayes is going to be a big-time player. I am, too. For uh, WKU. Yeah. I mean, she's facing a tough, tough test tonight. Vanderbilt, you can tell, you know, what, how they were so good last year defensively, not just in the SEC, but nationally. They can really, really get after you. Lexi Mead is back in in place of Hayes. Another steal. Jalen Foster's got it. Turbo's inside, and the layup is pure. Jalen Foster just is basically carrying the Lady Toppers right now. Jalen Foster has 10 of the 17 points for WKU, and that gets the crowd involved. Harbison over to Allen. Wide open three. Rims out. Rebound to Hope Savori. Swiped away. Loose ball right in front of the WKU bench. And it's out of bounds. Western Kentucky is called, rather, Vanderbilt is called for a foul. Yeah, I think it's going to be called on Jada Brown. And that will put Western Kentucky on the line right here. Here's, it's, a, it's what you call a loose ball foul, and that is uh, the correct call. Jada Brown second. Yeah, she went right over the top that time of Betancourt. So. Western Kentucky mentioned it earlier, very early in this corner, hit the bonus. So now the Lady Tops down by seven have a chance to get some free points here and get back in this game. Yeah, that's the other thing right now. Lady Toppers have not made a three, but have not shot three free throws very well either. And yet, the good news if you're a Western Kentucky fan, they're only down seven, can actually get down to five, and uh, you can honestly say have uh, be probably be fortunate to be this close. Odie Betancourt did not attempt to free throw in her lone season at USF. By the way, Vandy made a swap, or two swaps, I should say. Jada Brown and Demi Washington out. Bella Lachance, Amari Williams in. And Betancourt splits a pair. Down to six. And it's it's hard for Western Kentucky to press. They, they, Western Kentucky likes to press, but the experienced guards for Vanderbilt does make it difficult to press those guards. Gerard, offensive foul. It's Sasha Washington. No, make that Amari Williams. She did not think so. Yeah, she was trying to post up on the block. And of course, Williams is a 6'4 freshman that time. And it looked like her arm right here extends a little bit too much. And uh, there's the call. I think it's probably could go 50-50, either a foul on Vanderbilt or possibly a no call. It's the first foul for Williams and her second turnover as well. The UVA transfer pits, finds Savori. Three ball, no. Another rebound for Foster, but a travel. Foster didn't think so. She wow. thought she was shoved. Yeah, I thought it was either. And maybe be, it was tipped. It looked like to me it's either a foul or maybe a jump ball because if you watch right here the offensive rebound by Foster, it looks like the Vanderbilt player gets all ball that time. And I uh, don't think it's, don't agree on it's a walk. And Greg Collins getting his money's worth too. The chance bullet pass for Williams. It's opening night for the officials as well, you know. Ten on the timer. Williams, three ball, air ball. What's a little unusual for Vanderbilt, all their three attempts have been by their uh, fours and fives, their, 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 their wings and post players. They're 0 for 4 from three. Western Kentucky 0 for 9 from three. Yeah, it's going to be an Another yeah, foul and turnover. It's an illegal screen, yeah. and it goes against Odie Betancourt, the USF transfer. Yeah, so they, Western Kentucky continues to make mistakes like those. Yeah, they were trying to run a set that time, and Betancourt was trying to set a flare screen. That's a screen from the side and just did not get set that time. That was the correct call. Nearly intercepted by Savori. Here's Bella Lachance, top of the arc. Harbison sharing with Gerard. Wide open Lachance. 
Baseline reverse, nifty move. That was a nice reverse layup that time by LaChance. That was not an easy shot. Hope Savori tees up a three. She was bumped, no foul, and no dice on the shot. 0 for 10 for the Lady Toppers. Vanderbilt in transition. Harbison stops, pocket pass inside. Williams spinning into the net. Another field goal for Vanderbilt. That's her first career basket that time, and then she's got a big size advantage down on the box, six foot four. Aaliyah Pitts back to Jalen Foster, who has 10 of the 18 points for WKU. Finding Savori wide open, catch and shoot, bottom. They needed that. I tell you what, Hope Savori, Hope could miss 15 in a row, and she has no fear of shooting number 16. And that time, that was just a catch and shoot by Hope Savori. Freshman platoon swap for WKU. And Karis Allen, Josie Gilvin, Acacia Hayes in. Yeah, that's Josie Gilvin's first appearance after she went out with that little injury to her side. And the first we're seeing, number 32 in white, Karis Allen. Subbing out, Jalen Foster, Lexi Mead, and Odie Betancourt. Yeah, three freshmen, true freshmen on the floor right now for Western Kentucky. Harbison's got it. 15 on the shot clock. Now Chambers, cross-court feed, no one home. Black jersey and a black quarter zip for Greg Collins. I was just getting ready to say the experience advantage of Vanderbilt. They've got two guards who've played over 200 games, and Western Kentucky's got three, three players right now who's only played one. Savori has the only three of the game for either side. The freshman Hayes back to Savori. Savori slices inside. She's bumped. No call. Missed shot. Allen rebound. Put back. Doesn't go either. Loose on the ground by the baseline. And Allen touched it last. Yeah, that's what Karis Allen did so well in the scrimmage against Lindsay. She's very aggressive on the offense of You see the drive that time by Hope Savori. And here comes Allen. Good hustle. Just not, been, not able to finish over the taller Vanderbilt players. But the effort was right there. And that's something that you see from Karis Allen fresh off the bench. Greg Collins knows that she can provide that jolt. Gerard over to Chambers, hounded by Josie Gilvin, not giving up an inch. Gerard nearly carried. Collins says she did, and the referees disagree. There is a bump, and it's against Karis Allen. Her first foul, but it seemed like all of Diddle Arena thought there was a turnover. Yeah, it was a funny dribble. The ball was definitely high. Uh, it's, it's not illegal to have a high dribble. Your hand's got to be on top of the ball, and as you can see her dribble right over here. As long as her hand stays on top of the ball, uh, that's close. That could go, you know, that's it's legal at the park. I don't know if it's legal. <laughs> I don't know if it's legal in NCAA. Off ball foul and on the inbound for Vanderbilt. Yeah, and there's no saying the ball doesn't lie, and that time uh, offensive foul right after that on number 32, that time uh, Williams, so uh, Western Kentucky probably wins that because they get a foul and the ball back. Williams' is second foul, the third turnover she's committed. Yeah, and Vanderbilt only has nine players dre uh, dressed. Three starters out with season-ending knee injuries. That includes Jordan Chambers, the nation's steals leader last season. Karis Allen fouled on her way up. It was Amari Williams, and that's foul number four. And, uh, I'll make that three. That's number three, and uh, I don't think Coach Ralph agrees with that at all. And uh, she will have to sit, obviously, the rest of the quarter with number three. So here's the play right here. A little turnaround jump shot right here. And let's see if she gets all ball or. That's close. You know, if you're a Western Kentucky fan, you go, that's a great call. If you're a Vanderbilt <laughs> fan, you go, what are you talking about? Here's Karis Allen from Sykeston, Missouri, a few hours outside of St. Louis. The first woman from her high school, Sykeston High, to earn a D1 scholarship. That's great. She's got a nice release from the free throw line, too. I like her free throw shot. Two for two. A little light pressure this time by, the, by Western Kentucky. The closest it's been since the first few possessions, five points. 
hope Savari has brought a little energy to the game as well. Gerard, three ball on the way, won't go. Out of bounds, last touch Savori. A good effort that time by both teams going after that loose ball. Harbison will inbound for Vanderbilt. Fans getting involved in Diddle. Inbound, snagged at the apex by Chambers. Kick out, Harbison three, it goes! That's what makes her such a good player. And, and, I mean, not only can she score off a dribble, the pull up, but she's also very capable of knocking down the three. Back to Hayes up top. They loop it around the arc. Josie Gilbert. Back to Karis Allen. Now Savoy with 10 on the timer. Aliyah Pitts, the UVA transfer. Stutter step, stops, pops, and misses everything. Josie Gilvin keeps it alive and passes out of bounds with a shot clock violation. That's a smart play that time by uh, uh, Josie Gilvin, though. She's fallen out of bounds, and she threw it to an area that was basically nobody was there, but that's a lot better than just giving it right back to Vanderbilt. It is another turnover for WKU, 18. And we are not done with the first half. Yeah, you don't want 18 for the game, much less 18 in the first half. I think a lot of it is nerves, but I do have to give Vanderbilt credit. They are very, very good defensively. Hard screen set by Washington. Now it's Sherrod for a three. Another offensive rebound by Washington. She's been great on the glass. Harbison was fouled on her way into the lane. Karis Allen called for the personal. Yeah, Harbison is so, so crafty with the ball, too. She gets into the lane. She really knows how to lean and use her body to create shots. You can tell she's played a lot of games. Four-year starter at St. Louis. You can tell that she's, uh, and, and she's one of the players early tonight, too, that looked very, very calm out on the floor. Randy is in the bonus after Allen's second foul. And the first free throw is true. Kaija Harbison. 81% free throw shooter in her four seasons with the Pelicans. Second all-time leading scorer for St. Louis. She splits a pair. Josie Gilvin, not comfortable from that range, but she is from the mid-range. Nice pass into Allen. Power dribble, layup, toilet pulls out. Vanderbilt takes it over. Vanderbilt should go for the last shot. It's 20 seconds left in the quarter. And a foul on Savori trying to scrape around that hard chamber screen. And Vanderbilt is still in the bonus. And unfortunately for the Lady Toppers, that's Harbison going to the line. Savori's second foul. She's out. Lexi Mead is in. Harbison just split a pair. That was a good set of minutes that time by Hope Savari. Gets the lead up to 10. And one of the things that, from the Western Kentucky perspective, you would prefer, obviously, to go in under double digits right here. They'll have an opportunity to get the last shot if they can get the ball down the floor. And Vanderbilt is backing off, so. Lady Toppers would prefer a shot with about five seconds to go in the quarter. Gives you a chance to get a rebound if you do miss it. Acacia Hayes has the keys. We got to go right now. Lexi Mead makes a move on Harbison, spins inside, down the lane, throws it up, won't go. A great defense that time by Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt's defense stifling Western Kentucky's offense. 18 turnovers forced by the Commodores, and that leads to an 11 point lead at the break. Here in the season opener, no one's really sure what's going to happen in the first game. How are these teams going to look? Well, it was sloppy at first, but maybe you can just attribute that to the defense. Western Kentucky turning defense into offense, but Vanderbilt did that as well. You got to look out for both of these teams in the passing lanes at all times. Coming up after a short break, we've got second half action from EA Diddle Arena. Vanderbilt leading Western Kentucky through two quarters, 34 to 23. 
Frank Flynn with John Butler. Happy to be with you for the season opener. And, John, a big reason for the Commodore's success early on is Kaija Harbison, the transfer from St. Louis. She's got 16 points. Yeah, she's been big time. I mean, six out of seven from the field, one out of one from three. Scored her first a couple of points, kind of got in the rhythm with these pull-ups, layups off fast break. Made one big three from the corner. She played very, very well. You can see right, right there, one of the 18 turnovers for Western Kentucky. And she is a great, great finisher as well. That, that this time's a little pull up coming off the ball screen. And there's the three from the corner by Harbison. And that's why she was the Bellican's all-time second leading scorer. Meanwhile, for Western Kentucky, Jalen Foster putting the team on her back. She's got 10. She's got 10 points and she's got five rebounds too. That's, that's a nice assist from Macy Blevins right there. Uh, and this is Foster sprinting down the floor that time off a turnover. And what she does quite well, she's a really good offensive rebounder. And she's been also, also awfully good defensively. Right there is the steal. And uh, right here is the finish. Oh, Jalen Foster, new to the game. She began playing back in high school. Greg Collins asked her, hey, be my running partner. Let's get a couple of miles in every week. And she originally thought it was because Oh my God, my coach doesn't think I'm in shape, but really, Colin just wanted her to respect not only the game, but the work that goes into the game as well. It's something that she might not have gotten a glimpse of because she didn't start playing until high school. Yeah, and, and last year she started off on the, uh, coming off the bench and she finished with starting their last 17 games and just a massive amount of improvement from her last year. Second half action here in Diddle Arena. Western Kentucky starts with the ball down by 11. Jalen Foster. It's real critical for, for Western Kentucky to get off to a good start this quarter. Over to Foster. Oh, she took it from the apex and lays it in. That's a Foster. great hands that time. That's a little ball screen between Lexi Mead and, and Foster. She just went up and got it. Kaija Harbison. We talked about her all night, and for good reason. She's six of seven. Now Gerard, entry feed in for Washington, draws the double. Back out up top. It's the freshman Brown for three. No good. Rebound Washington. She's there, and the putback goes. Yeah, she missed the three so bad that time. It came right back to Washington. Acacia Hayes had five turnovers in the first half. There you go. Scoop to the hoop is true. That's There's the freshman that was advertised for WKU. Yeah, that's a big, big basket that time. But hey, she really, really struggled in the first half, and that maybe will help her confidence. Gerard uses the chamber screen, posts the three. And Hayes picks up the rebound. In transition, it's Meade. Layup, one up. You're a Lady oh, Topper fan. You can't ask for a much better start. Three straight baskets uh, and uh, Good start for the Lady Toppers. Gerard's got it again. Lexi Mead's defense has been superb. Here's Brown for three. She's 0 for 2 in this quarter and missed everything that time. And I think that's exactly what the Lady Toppers want. Uh, they want Vanderbilt shooting as many threes as they want and not driving to the basket. Early timeout for Shea Ralph and the Commodores didn't take long. Western Kentucky coming out with a different brand of themselves. Offense has been good. Defense has been good. Back in a moment. Well, when you come to Dental Arena as a fan, you can only hope that you see a performance similar to one that Jalen Foster has pieced together for WKU. Yeah, the Lady Toppers are down by seven, but where would they be without the 12 points, five rebounds, and three steals of Foster? Yeah, she's single-handedly keeping the Lady Toppers in the game with her with her effort on the boards, or, uh, with her effort on the in terms of uh, just her defensive presence, and then to be uh, able to put the ball in a basket, 12 points, key to, to getting the lead down to seven. Full court press from Vanda. We saw that a lot in the first quarter. Macy Blevins beats it. Hayes nearly turned it over again. She already has five in her collegiate debut. Lexi Mead slows down the offense, tracking down the loose ball. Ball fake Hayes swimming through the defense. Layup, no. And a foul on the floor anyway. Even though she struggled in the first half, just her body mannerism, she never looked like to me. Uh, uh, 
just her shoulder presence and things like that, she remained confident. She's a confident player, and that's why I think she can get this thing turned around in the second half, Acacia Hayes. It was the second personal foul for Marnell Gerard, and now another foul, this one against Demi Washington. So Vanderbilt stacking up these fouls, and we saw that in the second quarter led to an early bonus opportunity for the Lady Toppers. At Washington's first foul. Macy Blevins, long three on the way. Too strong. Yeah, that was almost from the red towel. Chambers, give and go with Harbison. Foster in the passing lane, Washington takes it away. Chambers kick out, long two, baseline, it's Demi Washington, rims out, and there's the rebound for the shortest player on the floor, Lexi Mead, pushing the tempo. Extra feed for Blevins. Driving inside, scoop to the hoop, too strong. Another rebound to Vanderbilt. Another missed opportunity for Western Kentucky. Pocket pass, Chambers bullying down low. Layup counts, and the foul. Yeah, that was a nice secondary break that time where the post player runs right to the block that time. As you can see, see the feed this time by Gerard right here. Perfect pass down to the block and good finish by uh, number five for for Vanderbilt Chambers. Yabrion Chambers, the senior from Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Volleyball was her original sport, but started focusing on basketball after falling in love with it because of some pickup basketball with her brother in seventh grade. So another late bloomer, just like Jalen Foster. Who got the rebound over the pits. Here's me three, bottom. Big, big three. That was a deep three from the wing as well by me. Lead down to six now. Lexi Mead connecting from range. It's her first three and the team's second. The Lady Tops just 15% from beyond the arc. Gerard hounded by Mead. Baseline, extra feed Washington. She bobbled it, but gets it back and spits it in. Yeah, give that assist to Gerard right there. Good, nice penetration and dish down. Both offenses look a lot smoother here in the third. Lexi Mead, extra feed inside. Jalen Foster thought she was fouled, but it was poked away. In transition now, Vanderbilt slows it down with Gerard. Nice, oh, nice touch pass. pass inside. It's Chambers. She finishes. Nice dump down that time by Sasha Washington. Lexi Mead, wide open, rims down on the target practice look. Lead. Balloon back out to 10 for the Commodores. High post feed Washington. Now it's Demi Washington. Chambers cross court into the quarter. Three ball, Gerard, you bet. Yeah, she doesn't make a lot of threes even at Boston College, but that was a big one. That's a Hail Mary, all push, but no call, and Jalen Foster is physical. And I think he wants a, I, th I think, I think Coach Collins wants a, uh, a foul call. It looked like to me there was contact that time on Jalen Foster the last two times down, and I think that's what he's trying to make an argument for. So Greg Collins getting his money's worth with the official, and that's been the case all day. Western Kentucky still down by 11. We've evened out in the third quarter, and we're back in a moment with more third quarter action. <laughs> Vanderbilt up 11 on Western Kentucky midway through the third quarter, and the head coach, Shay Ralph, in her second season with the Commodores, has to be happy with what she's seen from her squad so far. Led the Commodores to their first postseason bid since 2014 last season. Made the third round of the WNIT, but Vanderbilt giving the keys to the program to Shea Ralph. That's not necessarily surprising. A seven-time national champion as a player and as a coach with UConn under Gino Ariema. Yeah, tough, tough player when she played too. Very tough, one at once as a player, six as an assistant. She, had, she overcame five ACL surgeries and kept playing. They can't make that up, but 
maybe no better coach to lead this team with three starters out with injuries, including an ACL to Ayanna Moore and a three ball for Demi Washington. As of now, they're going to review that at the next stoppage. They actually rule it a two in real time, but we'll see. Washington might have been behind the line. Western Kentucky's offense struggling against this Vandy defense. Not so much in the third quarter. Here's Gabby McBride powering inside, and the layup falls. Listen to the roar of Diddle. Yeah, Gabby McBride not known for her offense, but much more of a rebounder and defensive player. Did a nice job that time. Squared up, used her body, and finished with her right hand. Well, Gabby McBride, by far the tallest player on the floor for WKU, and by far the most physical and vocal. Greg Collins saying that she is in the best shape of her life. Yes, she can run the floor a lot better, and that's important with the way WKU plays. Off the mark on the free throw. So maybe that layup by McBride sways the momentum here. Demi Washington, stutter step, an alter by McBride, but it's a foul. Yeah, that's a good... Pass that time by LeChance, penetrating oh, into the lane, right down the middle of the lane, drew the defense and then dished down. So Bella LeChance facilitating, and here's another look at the pocket pass. I don't know, it was close. Maybe a clean block for McBride, but Demi Washington reaps the benefits with a trip to the charity stripe and Washington off on the free throw. Interesting story about Washington. She credits Vanderbilt with saving her life. Back in 2020, she got COVID, and eventually that led to myocarditis, heart inflammation, the leading cause of death for athletes, current athletes. But Vanderbilt diagnosed it with some extra tests that they do, and most athletic departments do not. Loose ball right in front of the bench. McBride diving down on the ground, and Vanderbilt will assume possession. Well, that's a great story, and she's at a, very, at a great medical facility at Vanderbilt University. And Good here's hustle. another look at the last play. Yeah, great hustle that time by, by McBride and both teams, actually. So after the jump ball, Bella LeChance guarded by the junior Hope Savoy very tightly. LeChance loses her footing, no call, and another jump. Western Kentucky forces the turnover, and you can credit that one to Savori. Yeah, Hope Savori will get after you, uh, to say the least. Watch this pressure right here on the ball. Uh, probably the correct call. You could maybe possibly call a walk, but I think that's probably the right call. So correction, Vanderbilt owns the arrow. Amari Williams now stifled oh. by a double. There's an elbow. Lexi Meade took the short end of it. An offensive foul. Yeah, that will probably go to the monitor on this one right here. It's probably a glancing blow, but, you know, let's watch this right here. Right there. Yeah. Left elbow, right jaw. And they will take a look at this uh, to, to see if that's a... Uh, intentional or not. I, I don't think it was intentional. It's clearly, uh, it's, it's not something you, you really don't, when you're 5'5", five, five, you don't want an elbow from somebody that's 6'3", yeah. to say the least. And that's something that Greg Collins has been adamant about. The main factor for Lexi Meade is her durability. Can she stay on the floor? And that is not who you want an elbow from. Six foot four, Amari Williams. And Meade got right back up. She looks to be okay, but the question is, where was the intention? Is it a flagrant foul? Well, Lexi Mead, uh, you're talking about a tough kid. Now, that doesn't surprise me. She will she will stick her nose right into it and play. She's not scared of anything. Got both referees right now checking this out. Again, it just depends on which side you're on on this one. On one side, you think, hey, that's an intentional, that's flagrant. And on the other side, it's uh, a glancing, bl uh, glancing blow. It's clearly a foul. The degree of the foul is going to be the question. And with two, four team fouls, Vanderbilt, the Commodores are approaching the bonus for WKU. Well, regardless of the call, 
Lexi Mead looks to be okay, so that's good news. Starter all of last season, 30 games, 30 starts. As a freshman, 11 points per game. And about 30 minutes per game, she's been paramount today, and she was last season. So now the two head coaches will get an explanation. Intentional. Okay. Yeah, it is an intentional foul. On number, on 32 for uh, Vanderbilt, that'd be on Williams. Anybody can shoot the free throws. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a little bit different than the men's game. Men, men's game, they have a degree of, uh, yes. of, a, of a flagrant, you know, one, two. And women, it's either an intentional foul or a regular foul. Uh, so Western Kentucky will get two free throws and get the ball out. Hope court. Savori will take the free throws. Yeah, and who knows, 11-point game. It's been like this throughout the third quarter. Yeah, this is one of the few differences between the men and the women. In the men, they would be judging whether or not it's flagrant one, flagrant two. They don't do that in women. It's either intentional or not. And Savori misses the free throw. And this is the coach's decision on who shoots it. Obviously, the, the elbow was against Lexi Mee, but they went with Hope Savard. She was a 71% shooter last season, but goes 0 for 2. Yeah, that's uh, not, that's disappointing from the Western Kentucky perspective because you had an opportunity to get a, perhaps even a five-point play and miss both. So after the intentional foul by Amari Williams, one more, and she's ejected, but she's off the floor now. Sasha Washington takes her place. Jalen Foster probes up top. It's Lexi Mead fresh off of that elbow. Macy Blevins hounded by Washington, swimming through the defense. Off the window, it doesn't go, but a foul is called. It's a blocking foul against Bella Lachance in the restricted area. Yeah, that's, that's, that's one of the things that Macy Blevins has added to her game. It's like her third drive of the game, and uh, she didn't do that very much at all last year. I think that is the correct call. I did not think Lachance had gotten set, so uh, Macy Blevins has a shot to make, too, or if there is the call. I think that looked like the correct call. Macy Blevins connects. Birthday was two days ago. I asked her, hey, is the imminent season opener going to put a damper on your birthday celebration? She did not care about the birthday. It was all hands on deck for this game against Vanderbilt. It was a disappointing tri trip to, for Western Kentucky off the intentional foul. They only went one out of four from the free throw line. Free throws were a problem in the exhibition against Lindsey Wilson, shot under 50%. Here's Ryan Allen, arcs the three, and it's a bullseye. You can tell the freshman is a good three-point shooter because she took two in the first half and didn't even think about it, and the same thing right there. She's got good form, too. Washington is not giving up an inch to Lexi Mead. Macy Blevins directing traffic. Ten on the timer. Back to McBride, entry feed, big time whistle with a blocking foul. Gabby McBride lowered her shoulder, but Ryan Allen got the short end of the collision. Yeah, you gotta let you, on that screen roll that time. You gotta let the you gotta let the offensive player come down right here. And it looks like to me she slid under and did not give her enough room to come down. Another another correct call. So Allen, Gabby McBride yeah. will now shoot two. She missed on her last trip was only one of two last season, the only two free throw attempts all of last year, about 10 minutes per game off the bench. Western Kentucky below now 50% from the free throw line for the, half, for the game, is that correct? They are now seven for 16 from the stripe after McBride's miss and yeah. Vanderbilt takes over. Yeah, it's just really hard to beat a uh, power five team in Vanderbilt when you're only when you're two for 14 from three and then below 50% from the free throw line. Garab, a Boston College transfer, nearly taken away. Savori was in her grill. Now into the lane, Washington missed the layup short. Lexi Mead turns on the Jets, takes it to the cup herself, stops over to Blevins, extra feed, three ball, Savori, no. That's great ball movement. Made that Macy Blevins made the extra pass. That is exactly what they wanted right there. Wide open three that time by Savori. Just missed it. 
The Lady Toppers are now two of 15 from three. We got caught with a, with a hold on Savari. That's her third. Hope Savori is an invaluable bench piece, one freshman of the year in Conference USA two seasons ago. And then last year coming off the bench, more as a two guard, now as a combo guard this season. And a foul on the shot. Kaija Harbison baited Lexi Mead. Yeah, I mean, that's the experience of Harbison. I mean, she's played over 100 games, started all four years at St. Louis. And as I mentioned in the first half, she's very, very crafty. Here's the pull up. The shot fake and then drew the foul on Lexi Mead. So Mead is out after her second. Acacia Hayes taking her place. And now Kaija Harbison at the free throw line missing the first. She's one half of that bridge backcourt with Ayanna Moore and Jordan Cambridge out for the season with lower body injuries. Her and the fellow transfer from Boston College Marnell Gerard trying to help Vanderbilt patch that hole. That's the beauty of the transfer portal. I mean, uh, several years ago, you'd have to sit out. Now, both of those these girls would be eligible regardless because they're grad transfers. Yep. Karis Allen takes Gabby McBride's place for WKU. And the Lady Toppers have two more minutes in this third quarter to whittle down the deficit. Here's Hayes. Ball fake. Picked up her dribble. Finds a cutting Blevins. No dice there. Offensive rebound. Allen, she's fouled. Uh, every, uh, every time Allen is in the game, she gets something done for the Lady Toppers. Just watch, watch this hustle right here. Here's a drive by Macy Blevins, the miss, but Allen just, she just has a nose for the ball. So a chance for WKU to at least get within striking distance ahead of the fourth quarter. Karis Allen is true on the first free throw. Yeah, she's made all of her free throws tonight. That puts her three for three. Jalen Foster getting ready to check in for WKU in place of Karis Allen, I believe. Well, let's put the jinx on her, three out of four. And that keeps Aaliyah Pitts, the UVA transfer, on the bench. Gerard has it for Vanderbilt. Ryan Allen is a threat from deep. Demi Washington, very good dribble drive player. Gerard again, bullet pass inside. Washington had it batted away, out of bounds. That was another good play by the freshman, Allen. Uh, good post defense that time. Got around, got around uh, the offensive player and uh, knocked it out of bounds. So Pitts actually pulls the plug on Jalen Foster. Vanderbilt inbound, Gerard gets it in for Washington. 90 seconds left, five on the timer. Here's Harbison, stops, kick out, corner three, Gerard hits the side of the backboard, and it's a shot clock violation. Yeah, it's normally a three that you don't want to give up, the three from the corner, uh, but Gerard is uh, not known for a three-point prowess, though she has made one tonight. 123. Vanderbilt up 13 right here. Western Kentucky would like to have a little bit of a mini run to end the quarter, try to get it under 10. Pitts is fresh off the bench. She has some space. Kick out three. It's Hayes. It's true. That's a nice pass that time by Pitts and a big shot by the freshman. And Hayes is called for the transition foul on Kaija Harbison. Just another crafty play by Harbison. Uh, just leaned in that time on Hayes, but but the freshman Hayes play, has played much, much better this second half. Vanderbilt is in the bonus. You're right. Hayes has cleaned it up. She had five turnovers in the first, zero in the second half so far. And Harbison is smooth at the free throw line. Yeah, she got 18 points so far. That was uh, one point above her average last year at St. Louis. Oh, there's 19. Macy Blevins has it. Over to Hope Savori. Back to Blevins. Catch and shoot three. Nothing there. Karis Allen fighting for the revival. Back to Vanderbilt. In transition. Gerard pedal to the middle. She's bumped high off the glass and through the strings. Count it. And the foul. 
Yeah, foul on Macy Blevins that time. Again, it's just a Brad Sr. just knowing how to use her body. Just, just drove it right into Macy Blevins as you watch right here in the transition and then finished with her right hand. Marnell Gerard hasn't been too busy on the offensive end. That is her eighth point. 105 from range, and typically she's more effective from beyond the arc, but doing what she can to contribute. And that includes an and one late in the third. 15 point lead for Vanderbilt. Pitts has it, making a move on Gerard. Led the ACC in steals last year over to Savori, and she is checked by Jada Brown, the freshman. So Western Kentucky also in the bonus. Well, when you're down 15, you have to take advantage of scoring when the clock is stopped. And uh, free throws is something that, that the Lady Toppers have got to start knocking down. They're now eight, rather nine, of 19 after that free throw by Hope Savori. And Savori goes two for two. Free throw shooting still not great for WKU, and even 50%. And Karis Allen now getting checked out by the trainer, Rebecca David. I think it's a contact, I believe. It is, it's a contact. I think they're going, they're going to sub in Josie Gilvin, and Josie Gilvin is what she's known as a defensive player. She is uh, long and athletic. Now, Karis Allen has been all of those things for WKU. Now, she wants back in. Yeah, they subbed out Hope Savari. So, the Lady Toppers going with some length here, trying to see if they can get in the passing lane, force a turnover, and get another basket. Demi Washington gets it in for Gerard. Light press, and Gerard shuffles over. Shot clock to game clock differential of about a second. Vanderbilt has been in control, wire to wire. Harbison uses a hard screen by Chambers. It's too hard. Offensive foul. Yeah, another illegal screen that time. And what, what that does is it gives the Lady Toppers an opportunity to get the game within 10 going into the third, to the fourth quarter. You can watch that. It's close. That's close. Uh, it was clearly a hard foul. It's uh, whether or not she was in position or stop is uh, probably a question mark. Third foul for Chambers. Three seconds for WKU. Macy Blevins has it, making a move. Bullet pass inside. Karis Allen can convert. Got the shot they wanted. Western Kentucky will settle for a 13-point deficit. Vanderbilt keeping their foot on the gas. They've been very, very impressive so far. And why not? The three-point percentage is inching up. The defense has been good, but in transition, WKU getting a thing or two. Season opener, festivities. Basketball is back in Bowling Green, Kentucky. A lot of excitement in Diddle Arena. Lady Toppers down 56-43 to the Commodores. Vanderbilt has been outstanding so far through three quarters. Ten minutes left. What does Vanderbilt have to do to finish, John? Well, that, the first thing I have to do is just continue to defend. I, I think that's the uh, continue to defend and, and hang on to the ball. Western Kentucky had, did not turn it over. Had 18 turnovers the first half. The good news for Western Kentucky, they did not turn it over the third quarter, but they have to start making some shots before Western Kentucky get back in the game. Yeah, from three, which is one of their strengths, they have shooting just 18%. Acacia Hayes, dribble drive inside, kick out. Blevins thought it was for her. It was not. Yeah, that was the right pass. It just there was miscommunication that that, that time between uh, uh, Macy Blevins and uh, number two, number two for uh, for Western Kentucky, Jordan. Leah Pitts. Leah Pitts. Transfer from Virginia was camping out in the corner, waiting for a three opportunity. Never came. Thirteen point game. Vanderbilt has been outstanding on both ends of the floor. And a foul is called. Wow, you talk about ticky-tack. Aaliyah Pitts 
bumped Bruce. Chambers. Yeah, and the funny thing one. is, Chambers is not a threat no, from beyond the arc. That's not a not a lot of contact on that one. I think the game overall has been refereed well, but that was not a lot of contact. Gerard on the inbound. She could not get it in in time. And that's against a matchup zone, to be perfectly honest with you. There was not a lot of denial going on. That was uh, uh, that, that was kind of a surprising turnover for Vanderbilt. That's their 13th of the game. I'm sorry, 15th for Vanderbilt. Lady Topper's defense has been very good, maybe outshadowed by the Commodores defense. Now Acacia Hayes on the offensive end, bumped by Washington. So another foul to Demi Washington. It's her second, team's first in the quarter. And now Karis Allen, she sits. Jalen Foster back in. Aaliyah Pip Pitts gives it to Foster up top. Western Kentucky needs to make a move and fast. Hayes through the defense is fouled. Marnell Gerard called for the personal and the Boston College transfer did not think so. Vanderbilt's second and Gerard's fourth. Yeah, here's the, here's the drive that time by Hayes and that was the correct call. Off ball foul now. Wow. This one against Demi Washington, her third. That's three fouls in the first minute of the third quarter. And, and as we mentioned, it takes five fouls to get into the bonus for each quarter. And uh, if you can get into the bonus early, it's a big advantage. You can make free throws. Bella Lachance comes in to run the point in place of Marnell Gerard for Vanderbilt. 15 on the timer. Acacia Hayes into the lane, scoop to the hoop. And she's really, really played 100% hey. better in the second half. That's her seventh point all in the second half, plus no turnovers. She had five in the first half. Bella Lachance now. Taekwondo black belt doing some hand fighting with Acacia Hayes there. Harbison around the screen set by Washington in the corner. Washington back to Washington in the low post. Touch pass Chambers. Oh, nifty move. And Chambers finishes with a hop. Yeah, it's a good split that time by Chambers and didn't finish. Foster entry feed for Blevins. Nice. She was bumped and she gets the deuce. No call. Yeah, nice catch and finish by Macy Blevins. That was a tough play in traffic. That gets it down to 11. Bella Lachance. Bounce pass over to Washington. Chambers finds Washington inside and finishes with the left. Yeah, it was a good high-low set that time by Vanderbilt. And then the first turnover of the second half by Western Kentucky that time off the pressure. Trying to force the issue, and Harbison is fouled by Macy Blevins. I think they're going to give it away from the ball on Josie Gilvin. You are right. The freshman, the culprit, Odie Betancourt, comes in. To replace Aaliyah Pitts, that should be a rebounding oh, jolt for WKU. Vanderbilt up by 13, make it 15. Yeah, Inbound good. pass for a cutter. It was Yabrion Chambers. Yeah, it was a nice inbound slip screen that time. Led to an easy basket by Vandy. Odie Betancourt denied. She gets the loose ball. And now Josie Kilvin, no look pass. Acacia Hayes, baseline drive. And WKU is down by 13 hey. once again. Bounce pass for Washington. Oh, she's physical. She throws it up, and she's hacked. Yeah, that's what you call secondary break off a of off a basket. Vanderbilt post player just sprint right to the block. A good pass by Harbison, and and uh, she is uh, she is a load to stop inside. You watch her get good post position. That's Sasha Washington, 6'2", out of Lawrenceville, Georgia. Well, it seems like so. Josie Gilvin gets the foul call. And it seemed like she was trying to make up for the mismatch down low, Washington on Betancourt. Yeah, it's not a bad foul uh, against Washington. Uh, she was definitely going to score where she got it. Western goes small now with Betancourt out and Lexi Mead in over two, but a rebound for Chambers. She takes it away, and now Lexi Mead does the same. Two on two. Here come the Lady Tops. No look pass to Gilvin. Zero gravity. Too strong. Rebound taken in by WKU, and Jalen yeah. Foster capitalizes. Yeah. Great hustle that time by Foster on the offensive boards. 
On the other end, another foul. Kaija Harbison generating another opportunity at the charity stripe. Well, it seems like every little mini run momentum that Western Kentucky has gotten, it's been answered by Harbison. And specifically with her ability to get to the free throw line. Correct. Correct. And she forces Acacia Hayes out of the game with her second foul. Josie Gilvin sits as well. Hope Savori and Teresa Faustino in. So that should be a better shooting lineup for the Lady Toppers. Yeah, I don't think Acacia Hayes is going to be out long. She's on a really good little run here. Give Harbison 20. And she's been good from the, from the tip tonight. Average 16 points per game in her four years with St. Louis. That is the third best points per game mark in program history for the Belicans. 13 point game. Hope Savori fresh off the bench, gives it to Blevins, draws the double, Euro step to the cup. Another good move that time by Macy Blevins. You can tell she's really worked on that, on that little Euro, little, little runner in the lane. Now Harbison stops and gives it to LaChance with space. Demi Washington with 13 seconds on the shot clock, dribble handoff back to Harbison. Shot clock is down to five. Ignores the screen, three ball on the way, far corner, LaChance couldn't get there, and a foul against Demi Washington. Yeah. It was a loose ball foul as she pushed Jalen Foster in pursuit of the board. Yeah, I don't think she agrees with it. She's pretty excited. <laughs> but uh, that's probably the correct call. And I think that is her. You be the her, judge. Yeah, that's her fourth. We just saw the after play. Hard to get a good look on that one. So Demi Washington out with, you mentioned it, the four fouls. It's an 11-point game. Vanderbilt has led the entire time. Faustino, the Oregon State transfer, gives it to Lexi Mead. Now Hope Savori likes this mismatch on Washington. Back and down Washington, and now dribbles outside. Foster through the defense, high off the glass, no whistle, a lot of contact. LaChance hit the deck, and now it's swiped away by Foster. Lexi Mead puts it in. Western Kentucky is down by single digits. Yeah, that's great hands that time by, by Mead. And Mead silences the crowd herself with a foul in the backcourt on Bella Lachance. That's, that's Lexi Mead's third. And, puts, and Vanderbilt is in the bonus. Yeah, it looked like at the start that Vanderbilt, that Western Kentucky would be in the bonus. So you see it was actually Jalen Foster that got the steal and it was Lexi Mead on the finish. So Greg Collins, it's been a roller coaster emotion day for him. Really strong defense on the press there and then you give him right back with LaChance at the free throw line and she converts Bella LaChance a 75% free throw shooter last season junior guard from Florida models her game off of Steph Curry and Diana Taurasi and like those two, two she hits her ones. free throws yeah that's two good ones to do to try to, to try to play like Lexi Mead, stutter step, pass to Ron, stops, pops, off the window, it's pure. Yeah, she made a living out of that move last year. Great body control that time by Lexi Mead. Here's the press from WKU. Gerard nearly shuffled her feet, wide open Washington, and they missed her. Missed opportunity for Vandy. Will it matter? They have five minutes on the game clock. Watch the shot clock down to 10. Gerard uses the Washington screen. Stopped by Faustino, now it's Chambers. Guarded by Blevins, intercepted. Foster takes it away, in transition, three on two. Foster alone to the cup, too strong. And Jalen Foster cannot get the loose ball from Chambers. Big missed opportunity, a wide open layup. Yeah, tough angle, that straightaway layup is not easy to make. Harbison. Target practice. And it seems like to me it's almost automatic. A missed layup on one end almost always leads to a bucket on the other end. 23 now tonight, 24 now for Harbison. Lexi Mead. It's a pretty good grad transfer. Oh, is she going to take it? Oh, yeah! Why not? Macy Blevins! Look out! Yeah, 
That was about 28 feet, and she let Macy that time get it set in her hand, and she's got great range as she gets set. Macy Blevins has range, we knew that. It's her first three of the season. She led the team in threes all of last year, and Teresa Faustino was tied up. She gets called for a personal foul. Western Kentucky showing life. They have four more minutes to whittle away at this deficit, down by nine. Western Kentucky showing some life. Late in the fourth quarter, they're down by nine, but John, the offense has bounced back in a big way, and it started with Lexi Mead, the point guard. Yeah, Lexi Mead is like the, the energy, energy player right there. That was a steal by Foster, and that was me that, that had finished that up. There's a drive by, by Mead. Really, really good off the drive. And then you got the D, D3 <laughs> by Macy Blevins. That's the classic, oh, no, 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 no. Yes, 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 yeah, three. And, Macy, and Macy's played well. It's her 10th point. Macy Blevins, that's her first three of the season. Really Led good. the team in threes all of last year, but she says she can shoot even better. Well, when she gets set, she's, she's a deadly shooter. Bella Lachance hits her first free throw, fresh off of the Teresa Faustino foul before the break. And Lachance now has five points. Make it six. Four of four from the free throw line, though. Yeah, she's an experienced player, a junior, junior guard. Lexi Mead, corner pass, Faustino, too hot to handle. Teresa Faustino at five foot nine, tried to climb the ladder. I think she needed to be five foot 11 for that one. Yeah, a little high, but, but catchable. And the freshman back in the game, Acacia Hayes, who's had so, such a better second half. It's played in the second half like I expected all along. And this is the 21st turnover for Western Kentucky. But only three the second half. So they've improved drastically in the second half. Oh, boy. Savori nearly had a steal, and it would have been a breakaway layup, but Harbison that's one of those got the foul. That's one of those if you, if you get the right whistle, it's a layup uh, for Western Kentucky, and it's down to nine. If you don't, then it's two free throws by their best player, Harbison. And now it's Savori's fourth foul, and she has a convo with Greg Collins. You only have three and a half minutes left, so Collins might just keep her out there oh, and play. Yep. leave everything on the floor. Harbison has been so effective in every level of her offensive game, the free throw line especially. I hope Savori did not agree with the call, but Regardless, she's got the four fouls, and that is going to come into play with Vanderbilt in the bonus and Western Kentucky at DEFCON 5. The closest Western Kentucky has gotten it recently is down to nine. They had it down to six early in the third. Lexi Mead. They got the kick. Kick out. It's Acacia Hayes. Mid-range, didn't take the shot. Lexi Mead now with the shot clock down to ten. Good defense by Vanderbilt right there. Mead. Stops at the free throw line, swims through, and the push shot won't fall, but she's fouled. It's going to be on Harbison. That's only her second, but that was pretty good. That was good offense and defense on both sides. Good penetration by the Western Kentucky guards, but give Vanderbilt credit. They closed out uh, as about as good as you can. Alexi Mead was the ninth best freshman scorer last season in program history with a 326 points. Yeah, plus she shot 78% from the free throw line last year. Conference USA all freshman selection, and she's cash on the first free throw attempt. Californian in Kentucky getting comfortable at the free throw line and in Kentucky, the Bluegrass State. She has two country songs on her playlist now, so you know that's, she's, she's in Kentucky that's, now. That's correct. Vanderbilt in no rush, up by 11 with under three minutes to play. Lachance finds Allen in the corner, missed basketball in Pennsylvania last season. And the freshman hands off for Harbison. Kick out, long two. Washington rims in. And that's the fifth assist that time by Harbison. Demi Washington oh. now relentless on defense. Meade picks it up. Corner pass over to Hayes, and she's fouled. 
Ryan Allen was trying to back off of Hayes, but the freshman turboed inside and then got the hip. Yeah, I thought there was a, probably a couple fouls on that possession, that possession, and that should put Hayes to the free throw line. She is. Acacia Hayes, four-star recruit, ESPN's number 21 point guard in the class of 2022, the crown jewel of this past recruiting class for the Lady Toppers. She had 22 points in the exhibition against Lindsey Wilson last week, and a lot of fans were thinking, wow, the sky is the limit for this young guard, and they might have been right. They still might be right. Wow. It was a rough first half, a really strong second. She hits the second free throw, but a violation. Someone jumped early, and I think it was Vanderbilt. I don't think, I think it may be a foul call because Jalen Foster's gone to the line. And that would be an incredible opportunity for Western Kentucky to get four the points throw, in one possession. The free throw still counts, and it is a foul. Jalen Foster at the line, a big opportunity for WKU here. Hope Savori checks out. Josie Gilvin, the freshman, is in. Boy, you do Demi not. Washington called for her fifth foul, and that means she's out. And you don't see that very often where you see a, a, a foul on the free throw blockout by the defensive team. That's just, you don't see that very often. So when Washington, her day is over, eight points, three rebounds, two assists. She was four of six from the field, very scrappy player. And, and when, Jalen Foster now making things close. Yeah, when you're down double digits and you can score four on one trip with the clock stopped, that's ideal. Two and a half minutes left. Foster goes two of two. And WKU goes four of four at the stripe on that trip. This is a team who did not shoot well in the first, and we'll call it 35 minutes of this game from the free throw line. Shot about 50%. Pocket pass in for Washington, kick out, extra feed, extra again. Lachance, baseline drive, oh, scoop pass, and Washington finishes. Yeah, that's just superior offensive ball movement and then a great pass that time by Lachance. Hayes now draws the double, no foul, air ball, no travel either. Kick out, Blevins three. Left it short, Blevins gets her own rebound. It's loose in the paint, who's there? It's a jump ball. It's gonna be Vanderbilt possession though. Ball. That was a, that was a really good look by Macy Blevins. Just came up a little short. That so would have now, been that would have been big. With the arrow belonging to the Commodores, that might have bailed them out well. from potentially a big time Lady Topper run and come back. But with an 11 point lead, Vanderbilt just has to beat this press. And other than that, they should be pretty comfortable. And Kaija Harbison hit the deck, and I believe she slipped on a wet spot. And now the referee calling for that to be cleaned up and saying, no, wow. Harbison is not at fault for moving her feet. In fact, she is a victim of the circumstance. Yeah, I don't know about that. I haven't really seen that. It's normally the walk, and then you clean it up. Uh, so I think Vanderbilt got a big time break that time. I've never seen that call. I haven't either. The I mean, benefit of the doubt, no call. And whistle it off, allow Vanderbilt to inbound again. And not only does that prevent a turnover for Vanderbilt, but also it allows Western Kentucky with a chance you, you have to, to turn it over again you, off the inbound. You have to assume there's a wet spot. <laughs> yes, and now you've got to clean it up. They did. Yeah, they did clean it up, but normally it's uh, you, can, you can watch right here. You can see that right foot. Yeah, I mean, she definitely does slide, but she also walks. But it's normally they're... They, they call the walk and then apologize and then we'll clean it up. So that's that's a very, that's a rare, rare call. And if you want to know how the Lady Topper fans feel about it, take a listen. Right now they're fixing the time on the clock. Big break for Vanderbilt. Gerard gets it in for Harbison in the corner. Western Kentucky in the backcourt, very strong defensively, and a steal! Jalen Foster out of nowhere, here's Blevins for three! Ah. No good, this place would have erupted. Yeah, that's exactly the shot you got. That was a great steal again by Foster, who's played so well. Macy Blevins, wide open three, just missed it. Jalen Foster, that is her sixth steal of the day. 
She's been outstanding. And now, a replay review to check out who's got possession. This is a big call. So at 77-66, Vanderbilt has never trailed today. The Commodores forcing 21 turnovers on the Lady Toppers. And here is another look to see who's got possession. What do you think, John? You got Gilvin there. Man, that's tough. It's clearly Gilvin has it at one time. The question is, does LeChance also make the last contact? Mm. That's hard for me to tell. And if you can't, if you're not for sure, you, you stay with the call on the floor. I mean, right, right. I mean, that's a great job by our crew. Great yes. job with the camera right there. It's. I think that's off LeChance. Then it stays where it is, and they, they did. They kept it the same. All right, so Western Kentucky, it's now or never, down by 11. Yeah, need a, need a basket, a three would be perfect from, from the Western Kentucky perspective. Blevins inbounds, lofted pass for Gilvin. Back to Blevins. A oh, wide open three, no good. Another offensive rebound though for Foster, and she whips it out, but a foul. That might have actually been the best case scenario because Western Kentucky is in the bonus, the clock stops, and Jalen Foster is at the strike. Yeah, and that gives Jalen Foster a double-double. She's now got 10 rebounds. That was a great set. They ran a little lob play to Gilvin, and Gilvin instantly kicked it to the corner for a wide-open shot by Macy Blevins. Uh, that was a nice, nice uh, call that time by Coach Collins. Foster is now five of six from the strike. You're right, 10 points, rather 19 points, 10 rebounds. But don't sleep on her four assists and six steals. Oh, she's by far the player of the game from the Western Kentucky side. She's hit her last four free throws, and now Vanderbilt has to beat the press. They do with LeChance. Wide open, Washington down low, layup lines. She can't get it. Meet on the closeout. Washington gets her own rebound and puts it back up with a foul. Yeah, it was a good pass by LaChance that time, but give Western Kentucky credit. They didn't give up on the play. Four kids surrounded Washington and prevented her from making an easy layup. Savori comes in in place of Josie Gilvin, who was just called for her third foul. Savori has four, though. Yeah, that's an offense-defensive move right, right there. Washington is good on the first free throw. Not the best free throw shooter on the team. Shot 68% last year, not bad. Got both of them. 100% on that trip. 79-68. Western Kentucky in danger of falling in the season opener. Levins, dribble drive. She was bumped. Layup does not go, but she's fouled. A smart play that time by Macy Blevins on the drive. Just dove her body that, in, that time into Rianne Allen. Got an opportunity to score two more with the clock stop. Defense for offense swap again. Savori sits for Josie Gilvin. Western Kentucky pulling out everything that they can to try to make this thing happen, this comeback. Ryan Allen, by the way, is out for Vanderbilt. And Yambrion Chambers comes back in. 79-68, and Blevins toilet pulls out. Macy Blevins has had a very interesting day at the office because on one hand, she has 10 points, and that's not too shabby, but it took a while to get there. Four of 16, one of seven from three, and she cannot hit either one of her free throws. And now Sasha Washington is calling for an offensive foul. She threw an elbow. And I don't think she's uh, real happy with that call, neither is Coach Ralph. Uh, Here's another look. What do you think, John? I don't know. <laughs> it looked like a swing and a miss to me. <laughs> Hayes now, turbos inside. Denied by Washington. Vanderbilt takes one, over, one, two on one. Here's Washington on the other end. She can't finish, but she's fouled. It was Lexi Mead, the culprit, and that will pretty much do it. Vanderbilt comes into Diddle Arena and looks strong from the jump, and now the size of the SEC foe is taken over in the fourth. That was a good pass again by Harbison, and uh, I think that was a good foul that time by, Har by, by Lexi Mead. Still 11. 
Not quite over. I mean, Western Kentucky's obviously got to make a three or two, but it's not quite over. Down up to 12. It's four possessions. Pushing the tempo. It's Hayes. Cross court feed for Savori. Catch and shoot. No. Savori dives for the loose ball and gets it. Here's Lexi Mead, pulls the trigger. It's way short, and Vanderbilt gobbles up the loose ball. It's Chambers. No rush. Well, that's just where that experience of being a four-year starter it really comes into play for Vanderbilt. Good effort by the Lady Toppers. Harbison fouled on her way into the lane. Hope Savori is calling for the whistle on that, and Savori's day, yeah, she fouls out. This is one of these games where I think both teams will benefit. Obviously a good win for Vanderbilt on the road. I think they have to like their grand transfers to be yeah. how you mean Harvison is the real deal. She's going to end up with close to 30. But I think Western Kentucky can take a lot out of it. They're a bad first half in which they had 18 turnovers. They've really reduced that and really just comes down to shooting. I mean, just very poor shooting performance by Western Kentucky, but their effort has been outstanding. Kaija Harbison now has 28 points. The shot clock is off. Hayes inside, runs into a forest. Roll pass near corner three. It's money. Too little too late though for Jalen Foster. A timeout for Shea Rowell from the Vanderbilt bench. Uh, Jalen Foster just continuing her good play from last year. I mean, 23 points, 11 rebounds, a double-double, your first, ga your first game of the year against SEC opponent Vanderbilt. She's been outstanding, and just not 23 and 11. You mentioned it earlier. I mean, she's got several steals and several block shots as well. Five steals for Jalen Foster. So you know, Vanderbilt's trying to turn their program around. It starts in Bowling Green. That's well, their I think first postseason yeah. birth since 2014 last year. Now WKU. They're set to fall to 0-1. Yeah, but it, it's, it's, it's a game that, that, that really I think Vanderbilt's going to be obviously pleased walking out here with the win, but I see a lot of good things with Western Kentucky. Now, they obviously got to shoot the ball better, but a big, big turnaround from the first half just for, for, just for the freshman, for example, Acacia Hayes. She was really struggled in the first half. I like how she bounced back, persevered. I think that's a good sign for Western Kentucky. Shot clock is off, 11-point margin. Yeah, I don't think Western Kentucky will foul. As soon as they get the ball in bounds, I assume they'll just let them dribble it out. They may come and trap it, but, but I don't think they're going to foul. Lexi Mead all over the chance and a timeout for Vanderbilt with eight seconds left. Going to be a 30-second. So Western Kentucky. Well, what's their checklist after this game? Because there's a lot to work on. The three-point three point shooting, you feel like eventually is going to fix itself. Five of 22 today. Yeah, I mean, they'll get better at that. They're a good shooter, a good shooting team and so forth. You've got to give Vanderbilt credit. Vanderbilt's yeah. one of the better defensive teams in the country. But, I, you know, the disappointing thing for Western Kentucky in the first half was the turnovers. Well, they, they corrected that. I like their team. I think Western Kentucky's going to win several games this year. And don't forget, they got their one of their best players, if not their best players, will be back in a, probably within a month. And Maya Meredith, the leading scorer coming back from last year. Yeah, Meredith, the reigning Conference USA Freshman of the Year. And she can flat score, which is something they really need. Tore her ACL with eight games left last season. Vanderbilt comes into Dental Arena and takes the season opener from Western Kentucky. 82 to 71, SEC triumphs over Conference USA. A lot to smile about for Shea Ralph and company, the Commodores, after a sub 500 season last year, just one and 11 on the road. They're now one and 0 on the road. Yeah, one and 0, good start for them. Coming to a very difficult place to play. Diddle Arena is not easy for anybody to play, but Western. But I, I really thought the experience of their backcourt made a big difference in the first half for Vanderbilt. And you got to give Harbison credit. 28 points in her debut for Vanderbilt. Big time performance by her. 82 to 71 is the final. Vanderbilt cruising on the coattails of Kaija Harbison. You're right, 28 points. Five assists, four rebounds for the transfer from St. Louis. A lot went right 
for the Commodores. They never trailed, and even their three-point shooting can get better. They shot four of 15. Well, we say thank you to everyone making this possible. And for our producer, Raina Smith, for her husband and director, Elijah, uh, Elijah Smith, we say thank you. And for John Butler, I'm Brian Klein. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.